Welcome to Air Gun Action. In this week's episode, I'm taking a look at the JTS Aerocuda Max from the shooting party. But first up, we're out with Rich Saunders as he targets grey squirrels first with a roving approach and then with ambush tactics. So I've been running feeders, a uh, network of feeders in these woods for quite a few years now as part of my squirrel control job. And um, some of them are getting a little bit old to be honest. So the plan for today is to have a little walk around, check on those feeders, see which ones need replacing, and hopefully stalk one or two squirrels on the way if I get lucky. And then I'm gonna make my way over to one of the newer feeders that I know has got lots of peanuts in and has seen some activity recently and hopefully get one or two there. So I've seen um, a few squirrels on the uh, on the thermal, but I've not been able to get close enough to them to be honest for a shot. And there's quite a lot of leaf litter on the floor at the moment, which makes quiet progress quite difficult. Um, I have seen a few though, and squirrels spend a lot of at the time this time of year on the floor foraging about. So what I like to do is just sort of scatter a few peanuts around as I make my way through the woods because when I come back this way, I'm hoping that's gonna make them hang around a little bit on the floor, get a bit preoccupied with feeding, so I can get a bit closer for a shot. Well, I thought I'd missed my chance with that one there. I spotted him rummaging around on the floor and uh, I think he heard me because he stopped and he looked up, tail twitching, he could sense that something was going, going on. But fortunately he was faced away from me. I was able to hit him just below the ear and switch him off nice and cleanly. So I go and pick him up. Well, I can't be absolutely sure, but I'm pretty certain that one was snuffling around on the floor there for one of the peanuts that I scattered around earlier. There's a couple of drays up here, which is why I thought there might be a few in the area. Um, anyway, I managed to get into within about 22, 23 metres, I should think, and dropped in really cleanly with another nice clean headshot. So I'll go and get him now. So all the all the, the squirrels I shoot today will be going off to a, a local birds of prey centre to feed the, orc, the hawks and the owls and what have you. Probably a good time to chat through the gear. 
Um, the rifle is a BSA R12 CLX Pro, it's a side lever version, 12 foot pounds 2.2 and I'm using that with uh, JSB Hades pellets which I find cycle through the magazine really really well and are very accurate. On top is an MTC scope uh, and I've got a, a GoPro attached to that and all of that is held together, most important part I think, uh, with a set of sports match scope mounts which hold everything nice and solid so nothing moves. Well that one, I'm just on my way back to the truck to get my sticks and everything before heading over to the hide and he definitely found one of the peanuts that I scattered on the floor sat on the floor nice and still, nibbling away and I switched them off nice and cleanly So the feeder that I'm going to go and stake out um, I haven't got a, a hide on it uh, but it's full up with peanuts and there's been some activity on it so I'm just going to uh, find a nice bush or a tree or something to sit against with a bit of background cover behind me put on my head net and hopefully get one or two that way Well I looked away for a second and then looked up again and there was one on the feeder stuffing his little furry face. Um, the R12 did its job once again, it's really accurate over this you know, medium, medium length distance and um, he was dead from the moment I pulled the trigger. He clung onto the side of the, of the feeder for a few seconds, that's just a clenching action as the body shuts down but he was as dead as a dodo. Um, I'm just going to leave that one on the floor there rather than go and picking it up and breaking cover and hope that a few more come along. Well I tracked that one as it went up the feeder and then when I went to take the shot I realised I hadn't cocked the rifle like a genius but fortunately by the time I'd done that he was facing away from me a little bit by the time I cocked the rifle he just turned around a little bit more and presented a much easier shot and he went down nice and clean once again.
Well, the good news is that's another squirrel down uh, and he died really, really quickly, very instant, humane death. The bad news is he's died on top of the feeder. So I should have to break cover and go and move that one before I can carry on. Well that's another one off the top of the feeder, um, I think I'm going to make that the last one, so that's what, five off the feeder, three on the floor, so that's a really productive day. The R12 has performed fantastically well, I've had eight clean single shot kills, um, it really has placed every single pellet exactly where I've wanted it to go, um, so I really can't fault the rifle at all. So I'm just going to go and pick those up, get myself back to the truck and head off, so thanks very much for watching. Another great session on the greys for Rich there. Next up, I'm taking a look at a brilliant affordable PCP from the shooting party. Well, here's an air gun that a lot of people are talking about right now. It's the JTS Aerocuda Max from the shooting party. Now it's a PCP and it retails for just £549. It's a great looking air gun at a great price and it's also pretty accurate. Let's take a closer look at it. As you can see, the Aerocuda has a handsome wooden stock. Um, I would certainly describe it as an adult sized air gun. It's 104 centimeters long from muzzle to butt before you fit a silencer and it weighs 3.8 kilos unscoped. Now, despite being fairly substantially sized, it is really well balanced and I found it to be a very comfortable gun to shoot. It's an ambidextrous stock and the long forend has panels of checkering running along the lower half of both sides. Now up front you also have a Picatinny rail for accessory attachment. It's a thumb hole stock and the pistol grip also has panels of checkering on both sides. Now that, that grip is nicely sculpted and it set me up very well for the trigger. Also, because the grip is fairly narrow, it should also be good for shooters with smaller hands. At the back, the stock is finished with a fairly hard rubber butt pad. Now, as you can see, the cheek piece is height adjustable. Just slacken off the Allen screws and you can adjust it up and down. Now that's a feature that I really like because it means you don't have to compromise when it comes to aligning your eye correctly with the scope. As far as the Aerocuda's build quality goes, I really can't fault it. I really like the black anodized finish of the metal and I've got to say that the engineering is certainly above the standard that I would expect at this price point. Now the 45 centimeter barrel is fully shrouded. That shroud does actually provide some sound suppression, but if you unscrew the end cap, it is threaded so you can attach a silencer if you want to really hush it down. Scope mounting is via a Picatinny rail. Now the rail is in two sections and it provides about 15 centimeters of clamping space. Now those sections are interrupted by the magazine but the mag actually only stands proud by about six millimeters, so it is unlikely to get in the way. 
Now, I've actually got this compact scope on very low mounts, and as you can see, it's well clear of the magazine. This gun runs a 12-shot magazine in 177 calibre, which is what this one is, and a 10-shot in 2.2. Now, the magazine is made from metal. You get two supplied plus a single-shot tray. Now, it's a really nice magazine and simple to use. Now, if you pull back the side lever all the way, the magazine pulls out from the left-hand side of the gun. To load it, you simply push pellets in nose first from the side with the arrow, while keeping a finger on the back of the hull to stop them falling right through. You then simply turn the inner drum anti-clockwise in the direction of the arrow to reveal the next hull and increase the spring tension. Keep repeating that until it's full and you're good to go. Cocking and loading are taken care of by a side lever action. Now the lever is well positioned, unless you're a left-hander because it can't be reversed, and features a long, grippy drop-down handle. Now it actually has a sprung action which drives it back as you pull it back and then it goes forwards very positively. It's slick and it's fast. But most importantly, it keeps the shots coming without missing a beat. A lot of affordable air guns are let down by their triggers, but that is certainly not the case with this one. In fact, it's better than a lot of air guns costing significantly more. Now, I like the sweep of the blade and the two-stage unit is adjustable for first stage take-up and sear engagement. Now, as regular viewers will know, I like to test triggers on their factory setting. And I've got to say this one was pretty good straight out of the box. Now the first stage was fairly short and fairly heavy, but it then came to a really obvious stop before a clean and predictable second stage break. The safety catch is a bit close to the trigger blade for my liking, but this is a very common arrangement and there's no denying that it is easy to access. Now you simply pull it back to put it into the safe position and then push it forwards when you're ready to take the shot. The Air Acuda Max is regulated and that's apparent by its very consistent power output. Now this one is running at 11.8 foot pounds with 9.56 grain QYS pellets and variation was within six feet per second over a string of 10 shots. Now again, that's better than some air guns costing three times as much. Now there are two gauges on the underside of the stock. Regulator pressure is displayed on the one closest to the trigger and the other one shows pressure in the main cylinder. Maximum fill pressure is 220 bar. Now, it's quite a substantial cylinder, and from a full charge, you can expect well over 200 shots in 2.2 caliber, and close to 200 in 177. Now, to refill, all you need to do is unscrew the cap at the front of the cylinder to access the inlet, which has a foster connection. Accuracy-wise, the Air Acuda Max has really impressed me, and I haven't had a chance to do any extensive pellet testing with it just yet. Now, running the QYS pellets that I mentioned earlier, this air gun is easily capable of single hole groups at 30 meters. Now, with that kind of accuracy, and um, with power close to the legal limit, this air gun is more than capable of tackling live quarry. So, that's the JTS Air Acuda Max from the shooting party. Quite frankly, it is hard to believe that this is such an affordable air gun because it boasts features and performance on a par with air guns that cost much, much more. Now on top of that, it also comes with a really detailed and very simple user's manual. And that's something which I think is overlooked with too many air guns these days. So, if you want a good looking, reliable and accurate pre-charged air gun and don't want to spend a fortune, this one should give you your money's worth and more.
I'm afraid that's all we've got time for in this week's episode, but we'll be back in two weeks' time with much, much more. Thank you for watching, and please don't forget to like and subscribe. It doesn't cost anything to subscribe, and it means you won't miss a single episode. Also, do remember to take a look at those subscription offers for Air Gunner and Air Gun World magazines. You should be able to find links to those in the show description. Until the next time, enjoy your shooting and stay safe.